Yo guys, this is the Atoto F7 Wireless Edition. And I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about this head unit. The head unit supports wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, so you can interact with your phone all on this screen. You can hook up not one, but two cameras on this head unit. One for the front and one for the rear view camera. And get this, you can have the rear camera kick on whenever you shift your car into reverse. Pretty cool. If your car is new enough and has steering wheel controls, well guess what? You can hook it up to this head unit and it'll work perfectly. It has a built-in amplifier, so it's gonna enhance the sound quality of your speaker system. As a matter of fact, when I installed this head unit, I didn't even know my speakers had bass in it. <laughs> and one of the coolest things about this head unit is that you can play YouTube on the screen. Oh yeah. Well anyways, let's see everything we get inside the box. First, we get the Wi-Fi antenna. This is gonna be used to amplify your wireless connection for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. This product specifically comes with the backup camera, but you could order one that doesn't come with the backup camera, just in case you're not planning on using one. This is the wire harness that plugs into the Atoto head unit. We get a microphone, some universal mounting brackets, a outer trim piece for the head unit, a couple of booklets for detailed information, and the head unit itself. Close-up look on the head unit. Up top, we got a built-in microphone for voice commands. You can hook up an auxiliary cord, micro SD card, USB flash drive, nice and hidden. There's also a little reset button right here. This is the power button. It mutes the audio really fast, up and down volume, skip song left and right. I think if you hold this, it'll open up voice commands. Now here on the back, we got a lot of inputs and outputs. From left to right, this is the FM antenna, AC44F. This is for Ototo's wireless steering wheel control. Below it is a microphone, left and right audio inputs, and video input. You can probably hook up a PlayStation 1 on this and it'll play on the head unit. <laughs> RCIN, that is the rear camera input, B out 2 and 1. These are for headrest monitors. FIN, this is for the front camera. We get a single audio output for the sub, and this is for the left channel. And these four are going to be for your car speakers, front left, front right, rear left, and rear right. This wire right here is to plug in your phone for a wired connection and fast charging. Right below it is the Wi-Fi antenna. We get a 15 amp fuse, and this is the plug for the wire harness. All right, so this is how the head unit is gonna look like when you turn it on for the very first time. So the home screen is very minimal. It's really simple and not too much going on. At the top left, we got the home button, back button. This is your brightness. You could adjust to bright, dim, or I guess half lit. Right next to it, you'll get to see a list of your Bluetooth devices. Right now, I don't have anything connected. And you get the time up here. In the center, we get two widgets. This is gonna display your music player. So if you're listening to the radio or if you're using a micro SD or flash drive, you're gonna be able to see that in this little box right here. On the left, we get the date and time. And on the bottom, we get a few quick access icons. This is Android Auto. This is gonna be your radio, micro SD card or flash drive, and Apple CarPlay. In the center, you'll be able to access more apps that's in the head unit. You got more options on the next screen. Back on the home screen, I'm gonna plug up my iPhone. Since I'm using an iPhone, I'll go over here to Apple CarPlay. Right now we're in Spotify. You could tell because it's the icon in the center right here. If you tap this icon on the bottom left, it's gonna split your screen between navigation and the music player. And if you tap it again, you'll be able to access all the apps that are loaded onto the head unit. Boom. So in case you're not a fan of Apple Maps, you can use Google Maps or even Waze. Let's see how Waze looks. It's very simple and minimalistic looking. This is how Google Maps look like. It looks a little better in my opinion. And you can see at the top that we're in Google Maps as well. Let's go back to Apple Maps. See the icon changes again. And that's how these maps look like. And let's say you don't use Apple Music. Well, you can also use Spotify, Tidal, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and even Amazon Music. So as you saw earlier, this is Spotify. If you go back and select a different music player, you'll notice that the middle icon changed to the current music player. Let's go back. Let's go to Apple Music. Boom. See? Really nice. And if you want to get out of here, you could click on this icon right here or tap on the home button down here. Now, if you're an Android user, we'll hook it up and it's gonna open up Android Auto right here. You'll probably get a few prompts to download Android Auto, but mine is already installed, so we're already good to go. So you'll notice it's pretty similar to Apple CarPlay. At the top, that's your maps. In the center, that's your music player. 
And on the bottom, I think it's Google Assistant. So if we tap it, directions to Walmart. There's a Walmart Supercenter 2.4 miles away. Pretty cool. You can tap this icon on the bottom to access the Android Auto interface. Oh, this actually splits the screen. This looks pretty cool. You can tap it again to see all the apps. And just like Apple CarPlay, Android Auto is gonna load all the apps on your phone that is compatible with this interface. So right now we got Google Maps as the current navigation. You can switch it to Waze. And there you go, the icon updates. And this is how Waze looks on Android Auto. Boom, boom, boom. Pretty neat. And again, if you don't use Spotify, you can use Amazon Music, Apple Music, Tidal, Pandora, and there's probably other music apps that Android Auto supports. These are just the apps that I have on my Android device. All right, so since I've already gone over Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, there's actually a third app that's associated with your iPhone or Android device. If you tap right here, you'll see this icon and it's called Auto Link. I'm gonna go and plug in my iPhone. It's gonna open up Apple CarPlay. Once Apple CarPlay is loaded up, you can go back and tap Auto Link. Give it a moment to load and boom, there you go. Pretty much this app just broadcasts your screen onto the head unit and you can see that this is much smaller than my phone. So you might be thinking, what is the point of doing this, right? Well, here's the really cool thing about this. You could go on YouTube, boom, go to a random video. Let's go here, boom, skip the ad and check that out. The video's playing full screen on the head unit itself. And on my phone, you can still go through YouTube. You can browse around. Let's check something else out. And look at that. It just loads up just like that. And there's also one more cool thing about this feature. You don't have to keep your phone on. Look, I can just turn it off. Whoops. And it's still playing. I can go in here. Skip. And there you go. There's one thing I want to point out though. In order to get smooth playback, you want to go to your settings on the YouTube app and change the video quality. I recommend setting both of them to data saver because if you do a higher quality, it uses more internet bandwidth and it's just going to load a little more slower on this head unit. Now let's see how it works on an Android device. We'll hook it up. Android Auto is going to load up. Once it's loaded up, you just exit out and go to Auto Link. Boom. You might get a few prompts as well. Oops. Just click Start Now. Pair. OK. And I think that's it. Uh, oh, a few more prompts. No. All right. Now that all the prompts are out the way, you can see it's the same thing. You can go on YouTube. Bam. Select the video and look at that. The thing about using Android is the video is not gonna take the whole screen automatically. On your phone, you're gonna have to go over here and tap full screen and there you go. But unfortunately, you can't navigate through YouTube without minimizing the screen. See, boom. Also, if you turn off your phone, it turns off the video as well. So you have to leave your phone on and in full screen in order to get full screen on here. And in case you're wondering, none of the streaming apps are gonna work using Autolink. The only thing that works is YouTube. So if you're planning to use Hulu, Disney Plus, Netflix, HBO Max, or even Crunchyroll, it's not gonna work. All right, next up, we got the radio. We can tap on here. And this is how the radio display is gonna look like. And down on the bottom, we get quick access links to Bluetooth music, USB and micro SD card, wireless phone calls, AVN, and the equalizer. If you tap on the equalizer, you'll see that it changes right here. Standard, custom, dance, jazz, hip hop, etc. You can also listen to music using a micro SD card or a flash drive. You can easily plug them up right here in the front interface. I would say the micro SD card is preferred because check this out. If you have a flash drive like me, when you plug it in, now you got this big old flash drive stick just kind of poking out and your hand might bump into it and it might just get in the way really. It doesn't look as nice either with something just bulging out at you, you know? But as you can see, the flash drive interface looks pretty similar to the music interface. You got all the icons on the bottom. And if you tap on this right here, you'll be able to access other files. These are all the MP3s. This is the video files and images. 
But yo, there's something really cool about this head unit. If you get out of here, you can actually set a wallpaper from your flash drive or micro SD card. Go to display settings, wallpaper, and you can tap on this plus button. And this is gonna load up images on your flash drive or micro SD card. I'll tap on this one, tap okay, and there you go. You can get out of here and look at that. That's our new background. And while we're in settings, another thing I wanna point out is panel key lighting. So you can tap on this and you can change the color of these keys right here. You get six different colors to choose from. If you change it, you can see the differences. And if you just want the keys to be off, just tap this one, boom, no light at all. Next, we got the rear camera and front camera. If you tap on one of these apps, it's gonna give you a live view of the camera. This is a wide view camera, so you can kind of see towards the edges that it's a little curved. You can pretty much hook up any rear view camera. You don't have to use the one that Ototo provides. Now I don't have the front camera, but it's gonna be the same thing. You can tap on the icon and you'll just see a view of the camera in the front. AVN, this is gonna allow you to hook up headrest monitors. We got the equalizer. This is gonna be your fader and balance. It's really cool that you can go right here and just toggle. And then you can go down here, tap EQ. It's a 10 band frequency. You can manually set your own or simply tap on one of these presets right here. All right, and now time for my final thoughts on this Atoto F7 wireless edition head unit. First off, I really like the built-in amplifier on this head unit. I had my stock radio for a while and I didn't really like the audio. So I upgraded my speakers and even then, those speakers didn't really sound any different. And it wasn't until I installed this a total head unit that I was like, whoa, this sounds much better. And I didn't even know that the rear speakers had bass. Pretty crazy. <laughs> Another thing I like about this head unit is wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. That's like a must have feature if you're gonna upgrade your stereo, especially if you get a touchscreen stereo. Just in case you don't like the built-in interface, you can always go to Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. They always have a nice looking display. Plus in those apps, you got navigation and you're not limited to just Google Maps. You could go to Waze or Apple Maps. It's just a lot of cool features in Android Auto and CarPlay alone. Next, AutoLink, the screen mirror feature. I feel like nobody covers this in the review video. But the most useful thing I found with AutoLink is being able to watch YouTube on the screen. Oh, and I really like that this supports steering wheel control. Because I'm a Honda Civic, I have steering wheel controls. So you can link it to this head unit and it works perfectly. Plus, because I removed my volume knob, I find this a little faster to change the volume on my steering wheel versus reaching over here and clicking this button. I really like that this supports front and reverse camera. And it's pretty cool that when you go into reverse, it kicks on on the screen all by itself. All my cars are old and none of them have a reverse camera. So it's a cool feature to me. And I don't think the interface looks bad at all. It's really simple and clean looking. I've seen some interfaces on different head units that look pretty outdated or just not pleasant to look at. <laughs> well, anyways, if I had to nitpick and figure out what I don't like about this head unit, I would have to say that these ports right here on the side is it's kind of an eyesore you got the auxiliary port the micro sd card and the usb port i also noticed that the interface can be slow sometimes so let's say when you first turn on your car and you click around it takes a minute to kind of load and scroll but after you scroll around it, it speeds up so look if i try it again much faster really quick but the thing is it's every time you turn on this head unit that everything's going to load slow at first and it isn't until you been in those apps and opened it that it'll load a lot quicker the next time around all right so do i think this head unit is worth your money i would say yes for sure because right now if you go on amazon this head unit was originally posted for 200 dollars, and you know how much it's going for right now 151 dollars. i've seen sony's and pioneers and stuff for like two, 300, some even like 500 and up. So I can't imagine how much better a $500 head unit is gonna be versus this. Because I mean, this pretty much does everything I want it to do. And sure the interface might kind of lag, but that's it. I mean, it doesn't crash on me, it works perfectly. But anyways, like I said, on Amazon right now, this is going for 151. And I do have a little discount code for you guys. You could get an extra 6% off. There's also a second option. You could get the same device, but with the uh, backup camera and external microphone. That one is going for, I think, 209. It's technically a $10 difference because this is originally 200 and 
the other one is 209. But if you don't plan on hooking up a reverse camera or maybe your car already has one built in, you can just opt for this one, save a lot more money. But all right guys, that's gonna do it for this video. I hope I was able to answer a lot of questions you might've had. If not, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. And if you post your question, more than likely you'll also be helping out other people who are thinking the same thing. Be sure to check the description down below for Link City's head units and other products that a total has to offer. And by using the links I provide, it helps the channel out. So please, if you decide to buy an total head unit, be sure to use my link and thank you for the support. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for dropping by. See you in the next one.